It has been approximately seven months since I read a word of this book. Don't remember anything. Chapter 7. Front door closed behind them and Jessica stared at Salvatore, unsure of what to do next. Left out of escape. Yeah. Salvatore cupped her face in between both his hands, one thumb brushing against the pulse which fluttered furiously by the paper-thin skin at her temple. Using terms like pulse and paper-thin skin reminds me of people getting murdered. You are scared. Am I to take it that you don't do this thing very often? Never, she whispered. Look, Salvatore, maybe this is crazy, but she got no further. Because he stabbed her? No, he murmured, breathing in her perfume. <sighs> But her throat was frozen as he led her into the biggest bedroom she'd ever seen and no words of protest came. Like you're taking off the bare minimum of checklist for having sex. Like, oh, I did not not want it. Ah, uh, Jessica, you look as though you're about to be thrown into the lions. Do, 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 do I? Mm, shall I be your lion? Your big, fierce <laughs> lion. And I shall eat you up, every little bit of you. Would you like that? Salvatore! He smiled as he heard the faint shock in her voice. Unless it was all an act. A wide-eyed shame to make him respect her more. <laughs> I like the sort of leveraging system Sharon Kendrick has when writing these sort of little insights in the characters. Because you just give them a moment to think, oh, this is different from my circumstances. And then with the both of them, it gives it like a, a second paragraph immediately after that where they're like, but maybe I'm right. It's a very obvious and familiar formula to me by this point. In the end, this was nothing but a temporary pursuit. Something to be enjoyed by both of them. And as long as she was fully aware of the rules, then nobody would get hurt. No, oh, it's starting again. Oddly consensual. Tonight she was wearing a purple silk dress with tiny buttons all the way down to the front, which she began to undo one by one. So many buttons! Did you want this deliberately to tantalize me? Another real line from a real book. She wanted to tell him that she was terrified she would disappoint him, but no words came. Just relax. Enjoy it! Somehow she did as he said, forgetting everything except the pleasure he was giving her as his tongue tracked slowly and erotically down over her belly. Her panties obscured by a hideous pair of tights. She would not wear those again, he thought grimly. Take off my shirt! He ordered. Softly. She swallowed. His golden olive torso was formidable, and not an ounce of spare flesh to be seen. And if he had asked her to take his trousers off, she would die. I'm just hoping that Jessica is very literal with that particular statement. And only then did he smile, slip his fingers down the front of her panties, and touch her with such unearing passion that she gave a loud gasp. Gah! Now, you are ready for love! His hand moved to his belt, and then his zip. He was pulling off his shoes, his socks, his trousers. He was stepping out of his dark boxes with lazy elegance and he was aroused. Very aroused. With one slick movement, he removed her bra. <laughs> one slick movement. I imagine sort of like a karate chop. Like he reaches his arm around her and then <laughs> slicks it off the bra, like through the back. Then turned his attention to her naked breast. First with his eyes and then letting his lips roam over the pink hard tips. Now this is what we came to Shane Erotica for, right? He licked her, felt her shiver. Mmm, you taste of honey and desire. You taste good. And that's how you turn a woman on. He laid one hand over the fingers which lay so intimately over his flesh. Please tell me you are not a virgin. It's phrased as a question. I don't understand either. Jessica didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Very strange reaction. No, of course I'm not. Would it matter if I was? Of course it would matter. But this is not important. Not now. Only this matters. This. Quickly, concern gave way to pleasure. How could it not when Silvertoe was the most wonderful lover imaginable? She had never known that a man could find so much delight in the discovery of flesh alone. You like that? He questioned silkily as his tongue found a particularly vulnerable area. I... Jessica shut her eyes and shuddered. I tell me! Oh, Salvador! She whispered. Yes! Then damn well keep still for a minute! I c can't! Neither can I! He groaned. It was amazing. She was amazing. Mm, she signed. That was. bliss. A habit of post lovemaking wariness began to creep over him. A woman's virginity is the greatest gift she can give to a man, apart from the children she will one day bear him. Yep.
If you had been a virgin, I would have sent you away and told you to save that gift for the man you will one day marry. That's so old-fashioned. He shrugged. I recognize that, but I don't care. Yeah, you accuse me of sleeping around when actually I haven't. And you're probably had more women than I've had hot dinners and- Oh! Oh! Her furious words were silenced with a kiss. Okay, I thought she was gonna say something else. I thought that was a lead-in. But no, he kissed her. Okay, so he's jumped on her following that kiss and is trying to sex her up because, I don't know, rape? Get off me, she exclaimed, drumming her fists furiously against his chest. Get off! Off me! You want me to? Yes! No. Yes! But her words belied her actions because her eyelids were fluttering closed and she could feel the instant clamor of desire. So if he tries to rape you, but you're alright with it. Jessica? What? I like making love to you. I'd like to do it again. As his words painted a tempting picture, Jessica stared at him in confusion, aware of the frantic hammering of her heart. I think she just has a heart condition. She should see a doctor about this. I don't understand, she breathed. What is it you want from me? He fixed her in his gaze, staring down at her wide gray eyes. I want you to be my mistress, he said softly.